Thanks, Christine. Um, and I, I have to say, I'm really excited about this final showcase around implementer experience. Um, you know, we we keep on growing and growing and growing. If you haven't heard that the most the most recent data numbers that we have is that um, OpenMRS is in at least 6,500 sites um, in in at least 40 countries serving at least 14.6 million patients. And I say at least because these are all self-reported numbers and we know that um, they're probably, un probably under-reported. So during this session, um, you know, with, with this exponential growth, growth, we know that, that a lot of these implementations are locally owned and that people are interested in making sure that they remain locally owned and that they're sustainable. So that in part means how do we actually make it easier to build and deploy a distribution? Um, I know that there have been a number of implementers uh, who have who have made the leap from um, plat from an earlier version of the platform to the most recent version of the platform, and it's it's always um, an interesting and challenging journey. So the projects that we're going to talk about here in during this this showcase, we're going to have a variety of um, team presentations and implementer showcases. Um, we're going to be talking about um, expanding RefApp automated test coverage, setting the stage for end-to-end -end automated testing for 3.0 RefApp and um, platform maintenance. And um, you know the squads, the squads and teams to watch are our QA support team and our PM team, as well as um, a couple of implementers and global goods to watch, iTech DG and Open Ellis. But we'll also have showcases um, today from IntelliSoft. Palladium, and we'll hear um, some updates from Bomni. And if if you're a late breaking implementer who wants to um, showcase something and I have missed you, please um, just let me know in the chat. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Christine and Dowd um, to talk about our QA team. Right, great. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. So um, just a quick update is that um, since our last, um, since the last uh, update we shared, we have increased our automated uh, test coverage to around 80%. And um, the other key updates uh, I'd like to share is that we are happy that we are seeing different teams adopting the culture of testing. Um, and this is visible with some of the work that's already happening with the dictionary management squad and uh, the micro front end. And of course, uh, we're also starting to look into the OpenMRS security. We have that our team has expanded drastically in which for for us to have gotten to 80%, um, it's not mainly just because of a few, we have, we've had uh, a lot of volunteers come on board and working on the tickets and um, just making sure that we're moving ahead. And then uh, we've, man uh, we've also worked with the reference application manager, uh, and we're still working with him uh, in helping with the reference application release but with more focus on testing. And of course, uh, one of the other things we did is that we developed and automated some workflow tests, uh, which you'll get to see in our demo. Next slide, please. Um, for the coming quarter, we'll be focused on other products. On top of just just making sure we are done with the, with the, almost getting to 100% coverage for a reference application, we'll also look into other products, and some of this will be the Dictionary Management Squad, Micro Frontend, and Open My Security. And we'll also be focusing on uh, interoperability testing with a special focus on Open MIS, Open Ellis use case. We are still seeking people to help us write code uh, help in testing, become mentors, and of course, support documentation. And you can join us every Tuesday um, during our meeting that's at 4 p.m. UTC. We are on Slack. And in case you want to see what kind, uh, if you want to take up on some of our work, we do have our QA board present where you can see what are some of the work you can take up on. Um, without further ado, we'll go to our video that has been pre prepared by our QA team that is um, Dode and Sharif.
Welcome. This is Dawood and Sharif, QS Fellows, directly mentored by Kawes Joseph. In this presentation, we'll be demonstrating automated testing for OpenMRS reference application. Simple abstract, automated testing is a technique where testers write scripts and use suitable automation tools to test the software. This allows execution of repetitive tasks without intervention of manual testers. The team is QA team. And the first demo is going to be presented by Sharif. And this demo presents the old test workflow for OpenMRS reference application. Let's dive into the demo. In this video, we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to be testing our Selenium automated tests. And that is from reference application distribution. And the second video is going to be talking about the new best test workflow that is from the quality the QL framework. Within this test, it's a VisNode test. Ideally, we're testing the VisNode page. So uh, we're going to be automating the uh, VisNode, and these are the actions that are being taken along on the VisNode page. But basically, we're going to be seeing editing a VisNode, adding a new diagnosis, and deleting in this node that has already been added. I already changed my test to broadway file to false, then I'm running on localhost that is running in the background. Let me run this test as a J unit test. It first searches for a this active this node and then it clicks on the first active this node and then we come back to the patient clinician facing dashboard. It goes to the recent this node it adds a this note and populates the, the new diagnosis. After that, we come back to the this note page. It edits a this note by adding the new diagnosis, primary and secondary. And then after that, it leads that new diagnosis that it have already added. And you can see the test passing. Thank you and have a nice day. Thanks, Sharif. The second demo by Dawood. This demo presents the new test workflow for OpenMRS reference application. Let's dive into the demo. Write code, save lives. This is Dawoodi, a quality assurance fellow. And in this presentation, I'm going to be demonstrating an automated clinical this test workflow that has been developed following the new workflow best testing framework that was selected by the community. Very simple, brief introduction about the workflow. A feature file is written that stores user stories. Then these stories are wrapped into steps definition using either Cypress or Selenium. And lastly, writing down the test workflow. There are six user stories in this test. Let me talk less, let the automation speak. The command is npm run clinical this test. This command triggers the test to only run the clinical this workflow without invoking other tests that are present within the repo. The test triggers the browser and the test logs into the system. And then it searches an active patient and then it goes to the patient dashboard. And here the user stories begin. The first one is completing the this node. It completes the node, it saves the node and returns to the patient dashboard. The next one is adding known allergies to the patient profile. It adds the allergies and then returns to the patient dashboard. The next one is adding known patient condition. It has added and returns to the patient dashboard. The next one is attaching supporting document to the patient profile. It has attached, amazing. It returns to the patient dashboard. And the next one is booking an appointment for the next visit. It books an appointment and then returns to the patient dashboard. And lastly, it checks out the patient by ending the patient visit. And the test is done. Amazing. <coughs> Very interesting. You look at the test result here on the summary that shows the views, and it gives you the summary of the test. Thanks, dear viewer, and thanks for 
see your previous time. Enjoy this unique virtual community conference, the second of its kind. So um, those are the two presentations from uh, QE team and uh, please join us. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Christine and Dowd and Sharif for a fantastic update. Sorry. Welcome. Um, PM team is up next. Herbert, are you here? Can yes, you take I'm us here. through? Oh, yeah, Jen, I'm here. Um, my name is Herbert, and I'll give you quick updates about the PM team. For the PM team in the last quarter, we have managed to track the, the progress of different squads. And it is always from this point, we get to know that whether a squad is progressing or not, and then we can take actions. We have also used the PM team as means of unblocking members around the community. This always happens to those members who are joining on our calls. Um, we have also used the PM calls to keep our tools updated, and that is the CI build dashboard and then the PM dashboard. Next slide. And uh, our main focus for this next quarter, we are going to make sure that all the tickets, everything which is being done in regards to the tickets around OpenMRS is up to date. Um, also the pull requests that are always made around the community. As the PM team, we are going to make sure that they are reviewed and um, in times when we have a lot of things in progress, we always make a check out and make sure that all this is reviewed and needed actions are taken out. Um, for the PM team, we have a couple of members, for example, Jen, Grace, Daniel, Moses, and many others. We still seek members to join us during Tuesdays so that we can take this work for back children. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Herbert. Um, so that was our last team update. Uh, we're now going to move on to implementer showcases, um, starting with Susan from IntelliSoft, followed by Bernard from Palladium, and then um, handing the microphone and the screen over to Angshu um, to do a, a Bomni 9.93 um, showcase. So um, Susan, Shall we get started? Do you want me to share the video? Do you want to say something first? Hi, no, please go ahead, share the video. We'll take any questions. Yeah. Can everybody see the video? No, not yet. There we go, yeah. And together with my colleague, Brian will be taking you through today's presentation. Let me start by introducing our organization. Intel Soft Consulting Limited is a Kenyan health informatics firm with the mission of creating health IT systems for Africa. Some of the exciting projects that we'll be taking you through today include the South Sudan Electronic Medical Record System, SSMR, hospital MT by integration and the patient level indicator reporting. I will start off with SSMR. South Sudan EMR is a system developed to manage HIV patients for South Sudan. It is currently implemented and actively used at Juba Teaching Hospital, which is among the high volume facilities in South Sudan. Here's a screenshot for the EMR. So uh, some of the challenges we aimed to solve with the EMR include gaps in management of drug adherence and monitoring, lost follow-ups, patients, management and tracking of missed appointments, and tracking of patient contacts. The diagram depicts some of the tools and interventions that we developed to overcome the challenges stated above. For drug adherence and monitoring, we developed a viral load graph on the patient dashboard that would display to a caregiver a quick and summarized trend of the viral load. Also worth noting is that the system will automatically fl flag patients whose viral load is above or equal to uh, 1,000. 
For lost follow-up patients, we developed follow-up forms as well as reports with contact information. With this, the follow-up team is able to make calls to the patient and find their whereabouts. For patients who have changed location, they are tracked and referred to the nearest facilities. In addition, for every patient encounter by the phone, the follow-up outcome is also recorded and the reports generated. So for patient contact tracking, we developed patient contact forms that we use to capture patient contact information for every visit to the facility. Through the information, the reports are then generated and forwarded to the follow-up team, who then reaches out and schedules for HIV testing uh, services. This way, we are able to test and enroll HIV-positive patients across the care. For the missed appointments, initially the clinic did not have a daily record for patients who missed appointments. So the first step was to develop missed appointments daily reports with all the contact information. With the information at turned, the community health workers will then make calls to the patient and schedule for off-site services. For off-site services, we leveraged on Bamni Connect to capture and send data to the facility. Bamni Connect is an offline a feature that helps community health workers to collect information offline and send back to the server when an internet connection is available. So like any other implementation, we had our own share of pain points. And the first one was unreliable power and electricity, which resulted in retrospective data entry, gaps in existing data, which hindered legacy data migration, and unstable network and internet connectivity. We also experienced a slow uptake of the system due to the high workload and understaffing. So future plans for SSMR is to scale the EMR to support more facilities in South Sudan, to include the inpatient modules, and to support multi-tenancy implementation. The next implementation that we did was the e-hospital MTBA integration. And let me start by introducing MTBA and e-hospital. E-hospital is uh, Intelsoft flagship product. It is an end-to-end -end hospital information system powered by BAMNI. Uh, MTBA is a health wallet that allows patients to set funds aside for healthcare, thereby improving their financial capability to access healthcare services. MTBA is also supporting the drive for the universal health healthcare coverage you see for African countries as well as countries across Kenya. So what problem were we trying to solve? Um, our goal was to avail and collect patient information from all points of care across health facilities to support provision of care and the billing process. The integration was done through APIs, which was aimed to facilitate seamless patient billing workflow. So this is how it works. The hospital fetches patient information from MTBA, including insurance cover and the available balance. At the end of the patient journey, an invoice is generated on the hospital and sent to MTBA for billing. Here's a diagrammatic representation of the integration. The transaction is initiated on the patient's mobile device and then received on the MTBA platform. Once the payment is received, MTBA sends back a confirmation transaction code that the patient will present to the facility. The hospital, uh, in the hospital, the system will validate the patient against the transaction code and start a patient journey if the code is valid. After the patient journey, the hospital will then generate a quotation and send billing invoice to MTBA for payment processing. Pain points. So, um, lengthy and tedious process of standardizing product billing codes across, across both systems. So we did this by leveraging on the sale concept dictionary. And also we worked closely with the University of Columbia terminology experts. Future plan, um, one is managing product synchronization process between the two systems, uh, SMS integration for appointment scheduling, enrollment of patients to MTBA through e-hospital and to deploy and train at pilot facilities. Hi, my name is Brian and I'll be taking you through the BAMNI patient level indicator reporting, also abbreviated as PLIR. 
for the PLR project aimed to demonstrate uh, what was an approach to patient level monitoring through the use of a health information exchange that supports onboarding of multiple digital health systems through HL7 based interfaces and fire based terminology services layer. As we all know, reporting of health related indicators is a key activity that allows different stakeholder groups to perform various functions and also make evidence-based decisions. This patient level indicator reporting aimed to demonstrate a framework that enables extraction, sharing, and reporting of indicators from individual digital client records through the use of, a, of HL7 fire and related IHE profiles. So as a solution, uh, PLIR utilizes an open source health information exchange based on the open HIE framework that enables the sharing of health data across separate health information systems and the underlying design supports an integrated approach to patient level indicator reporting. As we can see on the diagram on the slide, uh, this is the health information exchange architecture and I'll just go through a few of the components. So first is BAMNI. Uh, BAMNI, which is the proof of concept system that was used for capturing the patient level data. Then within BAMNI, we have the OpenMRS Fire 2 module. Uh, this is the module within BAMNI that is responsible for the generation of Fire bundles upon requests from the AtomFeed clients. These Fire bundles will eventually be persisted in the shared health record through the OpenH, OpenHIM mediator. Uh, also within BAMNI, we have the AtomFeed client, which is a custom OpenMRS module for converting events to fire resources. Uh, then outside BAMNI, we have the OpenHIM mediator, which acts as the interoperability layer and sits at the heart of the data exchange. It receives transactions uh, from BAMNI and relays them to the Happy Fire server uh, residing in the shared health record. Also uh, within the PLIR, uh, we had an OpenMRS 3.0 reporting widget, which is our micro front end based on the OpenMRS 3.0 framework developed to visualize and export the results from the calculation of the TXP VLS indicator from the observations that were persisted in the shared health record. The TXP VLS indicator was the proof of concept uh, indicator for this project. We also have a demo video for the PLIR project for more details about the work that was done. At this point, I would like to come to the end of the presentation uh, and I would like to welcome uh, any questions. Thank you for taking your time. Thank you. What a fantastic presentation and what a, a wide variety of work to see. Um, we're going to move on to our next implementer showcase. And I'm gonna suggest that if you do have questions about these showcases, please put them in the chat. And of course, um, we can, you know, we can always kind of keep this room open if people want to chat later on after after we wrap up. we we have a couple of more showcase presentations to go. Um, next up is Palladium. And I think we have Bernard presenting, or is it Anthony? Yes, um, Jen, I'll, I'll present. Fantastic. Yeah, so. Do you, um, want, do you want me to share my share slides or do you want to share your, slide, your screen? No, uh, I'll share mine. Thank you. Yeah, so um, good morning and uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'll share my screen. Jen, kindly confirm if you are able to see my screen. Two thumbs up. We can see your screen. All right. Thanks. Um, yeah. So um, my name is Bernard Utino. Um, I work uh, with the Kenya GMS project under Palladium, and we are implementing in Kenya. So I'll just take you through um, a very short uh, presentation about uh, what we've been doing. And today, um, my focus is going to be on um, system integrations. Uh, but first, I'll take you through um, 
just say something a little about our project, Kenya HMS. Uh, then I'll share with you uh, our work on the integration, uh, our plans, and maybe some of the pain points. Uh, so uh, first, um, so Kenya HMS is actually um, a project under Palladium, as I already said, uh, funded through PEFA, um, funded by PEFA through CDC, uh, sorry. And uh, our core business in the country is to support the Ministry of Health, uh, both at the national level and at the county level, uh, and also the service delivery partners in development and uh, maintenance of health information systems. Um, so far, we are working in uh, 42 counties uh, out of the 47 counties in Kenya, uh, with a proportion of about um, 83% of uh, all patients on ART being seen through EMR, and out of those, about 78 are being seen uh, are being supported by Kenya EMR. Um, so our total implementation in the country is about 1,357, and uh, this number keeps on increasing because uh, uh, many partners are, are deploying to new facilities. So the number uh, keeps on changing over time. Um, We've done a lot of work on the national uh, nationwide migration from IQ care system to Kenya EMR. And uh, that work so far, uh, we've done about uh, 659, uh, which is about 92% of the migration. So it's, a, it's also a um, work in progress. Uh, so I'll also talk briefly about uh, collaboration. Uh, in the course of our work, we, we are working uh, with the different players in the health information system space. Uh, and just to mention a few, uh, we collaborated uh, very well with the AMPATH in uh, metadata and concept <coughs> dictionary harmonization. Uh, that also goes for the CHAI team. Uh, we've worked uh, very closely with CHAI team also in the integration of the IED overall load and the WebEDT systems. Um, we've worked with them health also uh, in the integration of Ushauri uh, system uh, for the appointment for the patient appointment reminders. Uh, we will continue to work with the medic mobile team and the Emozima team in the Afia start and Emozima development and integration with Kenya EMR. And of course, uh, we've been working very closely with the Ministry of Health uh, for the governance and uh, oversight. Just to mention a few, but we collaborate with several other, other partners uh, within the space. Yeah, so uh, what, problem are we, what problem are we really trying to resolve? And as I've already mentioned, um, today I'm just going to share what we are working on uh, as, re as regards the system integration. Uh, so we are trying to kind of solve the issue of uh, data exchange uh, between different uh, disparate systems. And so far we've done a lot of work uh, uh, on that. And uh, I'm glad to report that we've done so far about seven uh, systems are able to share data with Kenya EMR. Um, so the good thing is that Kenya EMR employs uh, both direct integration and uh, standard-based integration. So there are systems that we link up with uh, directly through the REST uh, web services, and there are systems that we exchange data with uh, through the uh, standard-based interoperability layer, uh, as you can see. So, for instance, uh, there is a system supported by uh, uh, by CHS Shinda within the country called Neme Confirm. Neme Confirm is actually a slang word for "I have confirmed." So this is uh, we are connect we are exchanging data with this system uh, in the effort to increase uh, adherence to ART uh, therapy. Uh, we've also um, managed to successfully exchange data with the IED uh, VL system, uh, where we do the remote logging of viral load request from the labs at the facility level, and also returning the results uh, automatically online. Uh, into the Kenya EMR. Uh, that also goes for uh, MLAB system. Uh, we've achieved uh, data exchange, but right uh, with the MLAB system, we are using the IL. So we are using the IL as the mediator to exchange and share data between Kenya EMR and the MLAB system. And this is also done uh, for VR, uh, viral load results. Um, another system that uh, which is our uh, in-house system is um, the Afiastar system, which we are using for reporting the uh, continuity of care 
between Navia Start, which is a HTS application, and Kenya EMR. Um, also, we have uh, we have been able to establish a data exchange uh, with the uh, Kenya HIS uh, reporting repository, where we do the automated indicator reporting. Uh, we do direct reporting from Kenya EMR to DHIS2 uh, system via IL. Uh, that also goes for EBDT, uh, for paperless prescription and dispense between the uh, HIV clinic and also the, uh, the pharmacy. And lastly, uh, we've also uh, shared data with Ushauri for patient appointment reminder. So we are able to, uh, uh, to establish uh, sharing of data across uh, the, these platforms and the uh, Kenya EMR. So I'll just talk briefly about three of these systems uh, because today I'm talking about the integration. So I'll just highlight uh, three of these. And uh, to begin, I'll start with the, the Nimecon farm system, uh, which is a kind of supporting a video uh, program where um, patients take video uh, during the time they are taking their ARVs. They take video and upload that into the video system. And that data is uh, shared with Kenya EMR uh, for further management on the, on the EMR side. So this allows uh, providers to remotely monitor ART uptake among uh, the, the young uh, people living with HIV who are also at risk of uh, treatment failure. So they are being monitored from the VDO side and also from uh, Kenya EMR side. So, uh, on this, the data that we send to this system, that we send to the NIME confirm system includes uh, patient enrollment information. And in return, uh, Kenya EMR receives, uh, uh, it receives video stamps, which includes date and time. And this one uh, we are using on Kenya EMR to populate the pill calendar, uh, to populate the daily adherence course, uh, which can be visualized on the screen. And as you can see on the screen, I uh, think on your right, this is a sample screen uh, uh, from Kenya EMR displaying some of the information that we receive from the VDOT system and also how we are able to monitor the adherence scores uh, from the Kenya EMR dashboard. Yeah, so these are additional screens uh, on the same. Uh, they are not very clear. But you can see on the left, we have the data exchange dashboard uh, where a uh, facility is able to monitor uh, the data exchange progress across the platforms. And on the right also, the facility is able to monitor uh, the, uh, the patient pill calendar with the green ticks denoting uh, the adherence, the days that the patient was able to check their drugs as, as planned. Uh, so if they fail, there'll be a red X. So the, at that point, the facility is able to check uh, uh, to intervene to improve the adherence of that particular patient. Um, the second system that I want to highlight uh, is uh, the EIDVL system, uh, which is a, a, a national centralized laboratory system for the viral load testing. So we have integrated uh, with this particular system uh, to support um, generation of lab requests uh, from a lab uh, into a lab manifest. Uh, the facilities are able to do remote logging of viral load requests to the uh, EIDVL system. Um, the system is able to pull the viral load results when they are ready from the VL uh, database uh, at, at the facility and is able to persist this directly into the patient, uh, patient record, thereby eliminating the need to do manual entries of, uh, of viral load results. Um, the facilities are able to uh, uh, print labels uh, for the for the specimen bottle labeling. This includes barcodes and QR, and uh, the facilities also also are able to uh, print out a, pre, uh, a lab manifest. And on the right, this is a sample. This is a, actually an actual uh, lab manifest from one of the facilities that uh, is implementing this particular integration, uh, which can be printed and uh, filed. Uh, in the next screen, uh, I think we have additional uh, screenshots for the same. On the left, you can see uh, this is a lab manifest uh, showing the status of, uh, of each manifest that was sent and the, and the status of the samples. So you can see there are samples that are complete. Uh, they are manifest with complete results, uh, while there are some that are missing some uh, samples 
uh, some also require new sample collection. So at this point, um, uh, the sample collection uh, facility is able to take some action. They are able to know in real time whether they need to collect new samples or they are, uh, they are able to also view, if you click at, uh, on view, they are, able, they are also able to tell the results uh, that has come out from uh, the test that they submitted. And as I've already said, uh, the, the beauty of this is that the results are sent directly to the patient record. So there's no need for manual uh, entry for that. Uh, the last uh, system I want to highlight again is the uh, first start solution, which is actually uh, based on the CHT Medic Mobile uh, application. Uh, and this particular uh, application is used for, is used in the KEP program and also for HIV testing services. Uh, and it is aiding uh, in tracking and reviewing individual level targets. So, um, this application actually is a mobile application and it, it uses uh, REST services for, for two-way uh, data exchange with the Kenya EMR and it can work both online and offline. That means it can be used in the community uh, uh, outreaches um, and it kind of uh, key in terms of achieving the continuity of care across KP, HTS and HIV treatment uh, uh, programs. So um, last but not least, uh, our next plans, uh, because our program is coming to an end, uh, I think in a couple of months by, uh, by September. Um, so we have uh, just one key uh, uh, plan is to upgrade from the uh, OpenMRS platform 1.x to OpenMRS platform 2.x. Uh, so this is work that uh, we are almost completing. It's currently ongoing, and we believe that we'll be able to deliver this uh, so that we can uh, uh, we can position ourselves ready for integration with, with the micro front end technology, uh, and also to enjoy some of the greater performances that comes with this particular platform. And also, it will uh, enable us to use higher versions of uh, the dependencies, like uh, higher versions of Java. Uh, higher versions of MySQL and also higher versions of Tomcat. So that will give us better performance and better security and, be and uh, improved stability. So we hope that we'll be able to deliver on that uh, before uh, the project comes to an end. Um, and also, uh, this is slightly into the future. We, uh, we plan that um, once we upgrade into OpenMRS 2.x, then we'll be able to adopt uh, technologies like the fire technologies for data exchange and also upgrade uh, our, our database to MySQL 8.0. Um, one pain point from the integration point, uh, uh, from the integration standpoint uh, is the data exchange limitation, especially with the systems that, um, that don't support the, the standardized, the new or the latest standardized approaches like FHIR some of the systems that we integrate with only support uh, REST web services. So that kind of delays uh, the rate at which we can uh, integrate with the other systems. But I think as things improve, uh, we'll be able to transition and start using the, the fire more. Oh yeah, thanks. So uh, that's all I wanted to share. And uh, in case of any questions, I'll be happy to answer in the, in the chat. Otherwise, thanks and uh, back to you, Jen. Thank you, Bernard. So again, like so much fantastic work being done. Um, I love it. I love it. And, and it seems like there's a lot of synergy with, with some of the things that we've seen over the last two days. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, we're going to move into our last two presentations. Um, both are BOMNI focused. So I'm going to um, invite Ang Shu to share his screen and um, give us an update on where BOMNI 0.93 is, followed by, I think, BOMNI integration with a federated health system in India. I hope I got that right. Over to you, Anshu. Thanks, Jen. Everyone. Hi. So my name is Anshu Man. I'm one of the community leaders of BOMNI. And I'm just going to give a quick, uh, you know, a sneak preview, so to say, of the upcoming 0 
So Bamni is an open MRS distro, but it is more than that. It is actually a complete hospital information management system catering to lab, to radiology, as well as like pharmacy billing uh, inventory as such. Uh, I'm going to quickly talk about what's coming up in 0.93. Um, sorry for the delay. It was like in you know, a close to our six months deal, but uh, it is the uh, augurs well because like we covered out of ground, especially on the security front. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So uh, one of our focus last release was like you know figuring out the internationalization gaps. Bumi is used all across and uh, uh, the world, and internationalization had some of the shortcomings. I'm just going to show you a simple thing. Uh, in, this is a French user, for example, and I search for uh, gastro, and you can see this is like in you know, diagnosis. You can look up like you know in local languages. Uh, we have a new appointment module. Um, uh, the older appointment module still exists, but the new one provides you much more flexibility and also has been uh, rewritten uh, and completely, but about 80% in React. So for example, now you have recurring appointments. Uh, we you can manage, you can especially useful, like say physiotherapies, you want to schedule or recurring ones, very, very useful that way. We also have like say multiple providers now for an appointment, you can uh, do that. You also have a teleconsultation. We are calling this as a preview because uh, not really um, future full. There are notifications and all stuff that still needs to be worked out, but it is extremely direct to build your own notification systems, etc. Uh, like, you know, you can do that. Uh, uh, okay, so how, like, you know, uh, oops, how you can do this, uh, I hope, like, say, when you say join, like, it opens up, uh, I can, Meeting, we use Jitsi, but at the same time, like uh, you want to host up your own Jitsi server, this is also possible uh, as such. So you can navigate, capture all this. This will have a floating window. Um, when you send a teleconsultation, you now it sends an email. But as I said, like you, know, you can easily extend it, each code changes to Bamira, like you know, simple implement the interfaces that we provide for SMS, WhatsApp. Currently, WhatsApp integration is already. Um, okay, so there is a lot of changes that has come on to as part of the form, um, form builder, which is what we call as a form different from our earlier, like, uh, which is more of a convention based. Oops. French. Just give me a second. This is on our QA instance, and this is doesn't have potentially the resources to support all this. Okay, while it loads up, maybe I can talk about. Um, we also have, for example, like brought in access control for reports, just to show you this. Like you know, I've logged in as a doctor. And you see the doctor has got only access to like, you know, specific reports. And this is like an all integrated or uh, in line with the open MRS form, uh, roles and privileges. Um, okay, let me choose English.
Okay, well, it does. Let me talk about other things. We also have the OT scheduling module that we have. Uh, didn't have a weekly view. Now we have that. Another important aspect is this: that Bamni didn't was not able to synchronize uh, like say any other order types. So we were going by like say labs, radiology procedures, but many of the hospitals wanted to have like say counseling. I wanted to have counseling as a different orderable. So uh, right now you can easily do it. For example, I'll show you uh, say um, something that uh, we did was like say counseling. For example, you can do this. This is an ankle joint operation. All you have to do is mark it as a consult attribute say this is a syllable attribute and this is synchronized. Okay, uh, right. So forms I was going to show you uh, quickly. You go to implementer interface and hopefully this will load up. So uh, lots of enhancement has come in. There are new controls, table control sections now allow like you, know, you can say add more. For example, I have this. We also have uh, in events, which you can also have a uh, form and on save, this would be triggered and you can do all your validations. If you want to call, you are allowed to do this. You can add like uh, privileges. So forms are like now uh, for a particular set of users. Uh, you have preview now. Before it was only you could publish and go there. So, for example, let's say I do something of this sort, and let's say 171. These are all calculated. You can write JavaScript actually to do this. Um, if you want to use skip logics, use JavaScript. Uh, do all this stuff. If you want to see a simple thing. This is the JavaScript editor, and it supports typical syntax highlighting, like you know, error reporting, etc. You can format it, um, and this is like you know, really useful for implementers. Uh, okay, um, I'm not going to talk about many uh, UI and enhancement has happened in the lab part. Um, Bumni Connect has also gone through a lot of changes. There has been an optimization in terms of synchronization. For example, now you can actually select. I want to synchronize days. Before we used to only provider who is logged in and what catchment he is associated with. Now the provider can choose that again from the hierarchy that him or her. Um, she can potentially choose what part of the uh, he wants to. Um, one more thing that I'm going to talk about, we had actually like, you know, done in the past, but this was a very like, you know, uh, uh, um, audit that was done. Lots of security bugs have been fixed. Uh, we have also raised some for open MRS as well. Um, but XSS, CSRF, this was our, one of our significant uh, focus this release. We are going to, now security is a wide canvas. It's not just from the product. It also depends on the implementer. It also depends on the end user. So we are uh, hoping to write sort of a, like a guide uh, or a framework uh, in terms of that, how each of these groups can look at in terms of the security from what lenses. We are going to, we have done some threat modeling. We're going to put this up for people to choose, obviously, like, you know, your perception of threats or, or and that's why we feel like you know the threat help. Okay. Um, other initiatives. This is something that I'm going to talk about. Uh, potentially demo the Bumni mission last Independence Day, long, uh, inaugurated our Prime Minister, and I'm going to potentially talk about Bumni as a health information provider in the India's uh, ecosystem. There is also Bamni and Abni project is a community health worker system. Uh, this is going to be a direct integration between Bamni and Abni. We had done 
integration with open srp smart register platform uh, but that was done through an hie this is going to be a first direct one okay uh, so last bit was uh, as i said india has launched this national digital health mission this is in discussion i've been involved so are many, many banks are around this and is to more mobilize the ecosystem. We are not thinking about a homogeneous stack. We are assuming this, like say, five years, 10 years to start off. It's going to be a diverse ecosystem. And Bubni, we are works making as a health information provider. So this is more courtesy of the Ministry of Health, uh, but this is the federated health record, like a shared health record. And one of the significant part is the health information the patient has supreme control any information moves like, you know, with patients a patient can give like you know authorized subscription you can revoke it patient can see who access his or her data at any point of time and we believe like you know when you talk about patient centricity that is the first thing that you need to think about like you know patient privacy data protection as such. And this has been done in line with the upcoming India's personal data protection bill, which is like now in a, uh, a review by the Joint Parliamentary Committee. So, okay, this last part, uh, uh, I'm going to quickly show you uh, of the NDHN and how uh, BAMNI integrates with the NDHN. So, First part, obviously, is a federated health record. That means there is no centralized, which means that each of the facilities must be able to serve this data. Like, you know, you can sign up with a health locker and you can actually keep your data, the data, mobile phone locker services, like, you know, you might want to do. So, for example, I've registered myself over here. This is connected to the box. I can actually do patient initiated. This is a, a, a uh, I can and like you know how we are going to authenticate. So again, everything patient must give consent even to get a basic information. So you can say, okay, mobile OTP, this is the different authentication mechanism I have set you, know, you can do by mobile OTP or demographics. I can choose areas like Aadhaar, uh, biometric system, and if you say authenticate, it's going to send me an uh, OTP, and I can key in the OTP, and then the hospitals can link. I'm going to show you other flow, which is going to be, this is the uh, Ministry of app. I have already logged in. I can actually search for Bamni and see, Or oh, maybe I, I need to re log in. Okay, so the first part this is the self discovery. You don't need necessarily have to wait for the like in you know, a hospitals to basically link it. You can also this, this works both ways. So I'm going to search for Oops, I don't know what happened. Uh, this is the emulator run. All right, so I click up Bumni over here. If I say fetch records, Actually, there are lots of, I'm not going to explain you all this stuff, but if you look into this, this is my identifier. I have just done it. What is the benefit over here? As I say, this is a heterogeneous environment. Doesn't matter what sort of a health information provider. If he wants to plug in a Fitbit, like say, say in a lifestyle app, something like this, endocrinology or any program, 
across India, anybody can get access. So for example, this is the first step. I'm going to say link selected. It is going to send me an OTP and I need to key in the OTP. Uh, sorry, I cancelled it. Come on. should send me an OTP. Okay. Okay. I haven't got the OTP yet. Hey, yeah, I'm not, I'm going to skip this, but idea is I'm now linked and subsequently data can be transferred. You, if uh, the ODP had come, you would have seen my health records fetched from Bamni. Uh, uh, that's what you would have seen. Sorry, I'm not getting OTP, but uh, this is not in our control. This is from the uh, sandbox environment of Ministry of Health. Uh, all right, so I'm done almost. Uh, what's in, for example, I'm just going to skip this. These are some of the stuff that we are thinking platform upgrade, open MRS 2.3, dockerization, interoperability on the fire, ecosystem integration. The reorganization is going to be a subgroup event, squad disk, because we don't have the same resources, but like, you know, it's going to be more subgroup driven. And please let us know, like, you know, if you would be interested in any of these areas we've been having discussion in the PAT calls. You're free to join our calls, our community. Please participate. Thank you. Thank you, Angshu. Um, it's, it's always so nice to see the variety of work and yet the similarities and synergies that, we're, that we see across implementations. Um, 